All Lethal Company Monsters Explain, the Bracken, aka Flower Man. So this thing's kind of like the Enderman in Minecraft, except not really. It often hides in the shadows where you can only see its glowing eyes, which is really creepy. To keep it from killing you, directly look at it for just a second, but don't approach it or stare at it. If you look directly at it for too long, like four seconds, it'll turn red and attack. But also, if it sneaks up behind you and you don't look at it, it'll snap your neck. So quick glance at it while not moving towards it, and it'll scare it away. You can actually kill the Bracken by having one man hit it with a zap gun and then having another person hit it three times with a shovel. Then it dissolves like a Thanos snap. The lethal Company Monsters explain the thumper. These things are horrible. I hate them. If I saw one IRL, I would peel my skin off. So some crazy lore, their name Thumper actually comes from the fact that they will eat their legs off in order to escape their shell during birth. So they're actually crawling around on their arms and have no legs. They're also supposed to be from the same species as sharks, so one thing you should know is that they're completely deaf and they can only find you with sight. They are extremely fast but have a hard time turning corners, so the best way to get away from them is just to turn corners and get out of their line of sight. Lethal Company Monsters Explained, Coilhead. These things are freaky. They're very similar to Weeping Angels from Doctor Who. You basically just have to to keep looking at them in order to keep them from moving. However, looking away for just a second or two could be lethal as they move super fast. According to lore, they carry a high level of radioactive particles and due to this and other reasons, it's highly speculated that they are biological weapons of war, which somehow makes them more creepy. But you can use a flash grenade to stop it for a while. Also a creepy thing about coil heads, if they kill you, they will actually rip your arms off and then replace your head with a spring so that you look a lot like they do. Lethal Company Monsters explain the jester. This thing reminds me of the things in my wall. It's like a jack in the box thing that's usually only found on the hardest moon that has three distinct modes. The first is finding a player and following them around in a peaceful state. Then it starts playing Pop Goes the Weasel while spinning its crank and not moving. And finally, it goes into killing mode where it eats everyone. A massive skeleton head emerges and you cannot run from this thing for very long. You can't hide from it. Once its head comes out, it's really fast and it only gets faster, even reaching faster speeds than the coil head at its maximum. And it will hunt down the nearest player. Once it goes into killing mode, leave the building and once all players are out of the building, it'll go back into its box. It's in your walls too. Lethal Company Monster explained eyeless dog. So these things are actually completely blind, but if they hear any sound from you, including through your mic, it will alert the dog. So if you crouch and don't talk, most times you can sneak past it. Even if someone's talking in your radio, it won't hear it. However, turning on or off a radio will alert the dog. If you do alert this thing, it will roar and run in the direction it heard the sound come from. And where it runs is often inaccurate, so you can usually just avoid where it's running sometimes. But if there's other eyeless dogs in the area, alerting one will make them all swarm. You can lure the eyeless dogs away with a boombox, a ladder, or having someone buy a cheap item and having the rocket deliver. Delivery. And they only come out at night, just like the voices in my head. Follow for part six. Lethal Company Monsters Explain Ghost Girl. Among the Lovecraftian horrors beyond human comprehension, there's also ghosts. This little girl in a red dress will target one person at a time and remain invisible to others. She singles out her prey based on a few things, like who is holding the most valuable stuff, who's the most paranoid, which is always me, and like insanity level, etc. There's much other stuff. But what's different about this monster is that she will actually leave the building and keep chasing a person if she's haunting them. She doesn't immediately kill her victims. She'll toy with them, flickering the lights, distorting sounds, saying hi to them. And finally, she'll start skipping towards you and kill you in one touch. Keep in mind, this is the rarest enemy in the game, rarer than a girl chasing me in real life. Lethal Company Monsters explain. Force Keeper, aka Giant. So yes, this thing is a giant, not very smart, makes up for it by being really strong. So the giant doesn't hear, it only sees motion, so the best way to keep from getting eaten is just to stay out of sight and crouch. What's interesting is sometimes they'll team up with eyeless dogs, so one of them sees really well and the other one hears really well, so that makes a really dangerous gang. Probably best to leave if they're doing this. Lethal Company Monsters Explain, Bunker Spiders. These monsters are pretty common. If you catch them while they're spinning their web, sometimes they'll freeze as long as you're around. If someone walks into their web, they will immediately start chasing that person and will follow them for a long time if they don't get far enough away. Getting bit by a spider deals a lot of damage, and if they kill you, they will cocoon your body and hang you from the ceiling so that your other players can't hardly get you. You can break their web by hitting it with a shovel. You can also kill a bunker spider with two to four hits with a shovel, but they do deal a lot of damage. Anyways, insert funny joke, follow for part nine if you guys want to hear it. Lethal Company Monsters explained hoarding bug or loot bug. These are basically giant insects that love taking scrap and keeping it in their nest. They're actually relatively peaceful and only attack if you take scrap from their territory or if you get too close to them for too long. They're usually not much of a threat as you can just hit them three times with the shovel or just run away from them. However, they are social insects found in groups of four to five sometimes, and if you aggravate them in a group this big, they are really dangerous. I'd personally recommend just beating them to death. Follow for part 10. Lethal Company Monsters explain spore lizards. These things are basically harmless, kind of like people online, they have massive mouths but aren't really a threat. They roam the halls of the buildings, opening their mouths anytime they see an employee to intimidate them. However, this is just a show as they rarely bite people, and according to lore, they are herbivores. If you corner them or run directly into them, they could bite you, but it hardly hurts at all. They do have these round purple balls 
on the end of their tails. Whenever they shake them, it releases spores like a mushroom, and then it makes your vision pink. Follow for part 11. Lethal Company Monsters Explain. Masked or Mimic or Skinwalker. So this thing is basically a piece of scrap that is a cursed object that will possess you, and it's kind of weird how it does it. So if you pick it up and you put it on intentionally, you will obviously become a mask. But also, if you just hold it in your hands directly for too long, you can also become possessed. And also, if you have a mask in your inventory and you die, you can also become a mimic. However, if another player has a mask on and just touches you once, you will also become a mimic or mask, which means you're dead. Default masked employees can also spawn just like regular enemies in the game. What I hate and also love about these horrible things is that they can leave the building and continue to pursue you or also go into your ship and hide and wait for you. What makes them so scary though is they will mimic players' action and movements in the game and try to make you think they're part of your crew. When a mask catches you, they do this throw up animation and it can be stopped by another player with a shovel. And you can actually knock the mask down for like a long period of time with just four hits with a shovel, but they will get up after a while. Masks are found on Titan and Rend and oh my gosh, they are so scary. I think they're based off of SCP-035. Lethal Company Monsters explained the Nutcracker. So this thing won't actually crack nuts for you, but it will crack your nuts if you get too close to it because it will kick you. It seems to be like another messed up toy thing, kind of like the gesture, but it looks like it has some sort of living alien creature inside of it. The bestiary calls them the watchers of the house, and whenever it first detects a player, it reveals one eye that scans the area for movement. You can avoid becoming a target by remaining completely still, not even looking around. Strategy for killing it, it can hear you, so if you make a noise, you can lure it into another room. One shot from it can kill you instantly, usually, so just wait for it to shoot twice and then have to reload. But also, keep in mind, if you get too close, it can kick you, which is an instant kill. It takes five hits with a shovel to finish it off, and you can actually pick up the shotgun and use it afterwards, and it's super powerful. What's interesting is they call the Nutcracker the Watcher of the House, and it can kill other monsters in the complex like the Thumper and the Bracken. So that's really interesting because, like, they have the turrets that only kill people, and now they have this thing that kills people and those monsters. So why do they put these toy things in there, or where do they come from? It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Follow for part 13. Lethal Company Monsters explain Snare Flea. There's bugs under your skin. This large insect thing is pretty similar to a face hugger from Alien. According to lore, it's a giant centipede thing that produces this silky substance that propels it up to the ceiling, and it doesn't like low temperatures, open air, or sunlight. It hangs on a ceiling waiting for someone to pass by and then drops whenever someone gets near. They attack you by wrapping around your head and then slowly suffocating you. Once around your head, you can have a teammate beat it with a shovel, or what a lot of people don't know is you can blindly exit the building and then when you go outside it instantly dies, or you can just get teleported out too. You can also hit it with a shovel yourself if you have one on you. If you're playing with other players and nobody hits it off you, you will die, but if you're playing solo, you actually won't die, it'll just give you critical damage and then it'll fall off. There's bugs under your skin. Lethal Company Monsters explained, Hygro Deer. These big puddles of goo aren't too dangerous, just don't get cornered by them. The lore in this game says that they can live for thousands of years and can convert any organic matter into their own body mass, which I guess that includes monsters? I don't really know. They can detect heat from players from basically anywhere in the building and then slowly move towards them, so it doesn't really matter where you hide, they can still find you. If you get stuck in them, you will die, but most of the time you can just jump over them. Placing a boom box seems to freeze them in place, so that's useful. And fun fact I read online, Hygro Deer is a Latin phrase that means to get wet. So, follow for part 15. Lethal Company Monsters Explain Baboon Hawk. These things are both bird and monkey. If aggravated, they will use their beaks and long horns to skewer you and then eat you. Strategies to not getting skewered. Intimidation works really well here. You can yell in the mic and that will kind of scare them. Also, if you stare directly at them, it will make them shy away. Baboon Hawks are said to only attack players when they have equal or greater numbers to that player's group, so staying in a group really helps. You can kill them with a shovel fairly easily, according to players, but if they're in a large group, you don't stand a chance, don't try it. According to lore, they mainly like eating small mammals, but whenever they get desperate, they will sometimes use their large numbers to attack animals twice their size, like eyeless dogs. So yes, they can kill eyeless dogs, and sometimes eyeless dogs kill them. Fall for part 16. Lethal Company Monsters Explained, Earth Leviathan, Shikalu Giant Worms, Roaming Underground, I'm pretty sure it's a Dune reference. So these things stay underground until they find prey and then burst through the ground and eat them. There's actually videos of people baiting these things or accidentally having these things eat the Forest Keeper whenever it's chasing them, so that's awesome. That should honestly happen more. Strategy for not getting eaten. Before the Earth Leviathan bursts through the ground, it announces it's going to attack with a large growl and then black particles start rising from the ground. As soon as you notice this is happening, immediately sprint back to where you came or just out of the attack area where the stuff is rising. If you're really heavy, you might have to drop some stuff, but if you're fast, you can get out. Lore. They mainly come out at night. 
they can burrow 40 meters below ground, and they can feel the slightest vibrations above the ground. Lethal Company Monsters Explained, Jib. So this is a monster I feel like people don't hardly think about because it's right in front of your face all the time. Jib is that tentacle monster thing behind the counter. As far as we know, he's the only representative for the company that we see in the game, but there's some weird things about him. When you land, the company monster always seems to start out asleep with the door closed, and the more noise it detects, the faster the door will open, either for grabbing scrap or for attacking. What's interesting is that for selling your stuff, you can either get a default voice line like, your work keeps, keeps the, the company, company happy, happy, or you have about a 3% chance of getting a rare voice line. The company must stay happy. The company must when it says the company must stay happy, it makes me think there's horrible consequences for not keeping the company happy or Jeb fed. This is another rare voice line. This hole cannot contain it. I personally think it's not the monster saying this, but it's like the company saying this wall cannot contain it because it's saying like it's a warning that the wall alone won't keep it in there and that it needs to be fed to stay in there. One last one. Keep our investors happy. So this one says keep our investors happy. And this makes me think that there's like investors out there that were like in this solar system and they invested in this company to keep this creature at bay, keep it behind the walls. And that this monster behind the walls is like an interplanetary traveler and could possibly like go out and devour planets or something. It reminds me of like in the game, you get this record that is from Sigurd where he says that there is a beast that swallowed up a golden planet in like this fairy tale in their universe. So maybe this monster is the monster that swallowed up the golden planet and they're keeping it behind the walls. And the whole point of the company is just to keep it fed just like Sigurd had said in his entries. Lethal Company Monsters explain the butler. This thing looks like a blobfish for some reason. The butler will never attack if at least two players are near. It. But as soon as a person is alone with it in its line of sight for too long, the butler puts its broom away, pulls out a knife, and immediately starts attacking. The butler then only stops attacking whenever another player joins the lone player. Or it then puts its knife away and then starts sweeping like nothing ever happened. It only takes five shovel hits in multiplayer, or just one hit playing solo to kill it. And when it dies, it inflates like a balloon and then pops, spawning masked hornets, which are just like the bees. It also drops a knife too, which you can then pick up. And according to Sigurd's logs, it smells terrible terrible like rotting meat. Fall for part 19. Lethal Company Monsters Explained Old Birds. These are giant robot things that have a bright light on their head. They activate after about 2 p.m. and they don't care if you're a human or a monster. They just destroy everything they see, which I think is great, like this giant. They can do three things to you. Shoot rockets at you, stomp on you after flying around, or grab you and burn you, which is an instant kill. To deal with them, either just get everything done before they activate, or just stay out of their searchlight, because they could literally just destroy all the monsters for you, which is helpful. What's kind of terrifying is they make this horrible baby crying sound, and according to Sigurd's logs, old birds are centuries of years old and are fully autonomous weapons of war. Their origins are a mystery to everybody, but normally they just go to a target planet and stay there forever, but they're also capable of flying around using their rocket legs, so it's said they sometimes migrate to other planets like flocks of geese. Thanks for watching, follow for more. Lethal Company Monsters Explain Tulip Snakes. These are the only actual helpful monsters in the game, unless you consider what the old birds do as being helpful. Basically, if you get in their line of sight, they will grab onto your head and attempt to lift you into the air. If enough of them attach to you, you will be able to fly around horizontally with similar mechanics to the jetpack, but you can't decide what height you want to go. The more that attach to you, the faster you'll fly, and after a few times of flying, they'll actually drop you, but the fall damage isn't as bad as usual. And they look like flowery lizard things, and the reason the Beast series says that is is because it's camouflage because they usually live in really woodsy areas. I especially found a lot of them on the moon Adamance. According to lore, the reason they actually lift players into the air is because it's a mating display to attract potential mates. And if you don't like them, or you don't want to deal with them, just grab a shovel and hit them one time, it'll take care of them. Even if there's a ton on you, one swing will kill them all. And the reason I say they're helpful is because if there's a monster you want to fly away from, or you want to get across the map really fast, you can do that with them and they're not really a big problem. And that's all the new monsters for version 50 as of April 15th, 2024. Thank you guys for watching and follow for more weird stuff like this. Thanks guys.